Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We are the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may not have prepared you for. As always, I'm AJ and sitting across from me, Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? Doing great, AJ. Uh, today marks vacation week for summer, so about to go on vacation. Amen. I am right there with you. Yeah, where, where are uh, you guys going? We are headed to the beach. All right. All right. And where we, are y'all headed? We are doing a national park. So uh, we are going so probably, to the yep. Midwest, going to hit up Glacier okay. National Forest. Oh, national we park. are going in opposite directions. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. completely opposite directions. Some Gulf Coast beach time. Yeah, I I don't even know how much Gulf Coast, uh, Coast beach time I'm actually going to have just because of school. Because... Um, so our semester's finished for our teaching, at least, you know, next semester's finals. And I don't, I don't, I don't give a quote unquote final. So they've already taken their last exam for me. And so I'm done. It's just grades now. So normally I would just be going to the beach and having fun because I have nothing to do. But now with the program, it's our semester doesn't end for the program for another three or four weeks. Your doctoral uh, so, program. Yeah. So I'm still right in the middle of it. Matter of fact, I've tried to get ahead with my normal weekly stuff. Um, for next week so I can dedicate pretty much all week to writing this research paper that we have to write that I have not started on yet. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah that, no no need to procrastinate on that one. You better jump on that because that yeah. deadline's coming fast. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to get on that and get ready for uh, for all that because we got, we got to do two finals. We got two final papers that we got to write. So if I can get one done, that'll be great. See everybody out there, it's not just you guys who are suffering through papers and finals and deadlines and everything. Even your professors still have those same deadlines coming at them. So, Oh, God, yeah, it's awful. So what you want to talk about today? Let's talk about something that I've, I mean, if you've seen a picture of me, you know I like it and it's food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking about meal plans, college meal plans. That's uh, a good one. Does that sound good to you? Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, that's a major consideration, you know, big money, a lot of other considerations in there too. So yeah, let's do it. Uh, before we do though, remind everybody, got to visit our website, reschooled with a D, not an ED, reschool.com. Uh, check out our most recent episodes, check out the other stuff we're putting on social media. If you got any questions, comments, things you want us to talk about, send us that. Of course, you can reach all our social media profiles from there and you'll see all the major uh, podcasting apps or platforms where our show is listed. So if you can find us there, give us a bunch of stars, tell us how awesome we are. And yeah, that's, 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 that's all we ask of you. Oh yeah. Well, Jason, it looks like you were actually pretty responsible with your food intake in college uh, and, <laughs> and in your professional career. Me, on the other hand, I could have stood to, to miss a meal or two. Um, but quick question, how was the food at your alma mater? Oh, see, it was tough, man, because the the food was amazing. Um, I've mentioned before I went to the College of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina, and we had a partnership at the time with Johnson and Wales, which if you're familiar with that, it's, you know, that's where Emeril Agassi went. It was at a different campus, but, you know, it's a culinary arts school and they're amazing. So basically the chefs would come over and run uh, these kind of kiosk in our food center. So we had all our normal, you know, cafeteria style food on the line, sandwiches, things like that you could have. Uh, but we had these little specialty things like every day we'd have these fancy wraps or fancy salads and all this kind of stuff. So I lived it up. I'm not going to lie. The food was amazing uh, during my time. But I don't know. What about you? Do you, uh, do you have solid food experience there in college? Y'all freaking had Michelin star chefs. Yeah. <laughs> And ours look like the Michelin man. Um, <laughs> well, you never trust a skinny chef, right? Amen. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't Amen. eat their own product, right? You, yeah. you never trust yeah, a skinny is, chef. And you know, side, side remark, did you know that the Michelin star for restaurants was made by the same company that was, that makes Michelin tires? Well, that, that it's so crazy. You, know? you would think. Um, so no, I, well, one, I didn't spend a lot of time in the, cafeteria, the the dining hall, whatever you want to call it, at my uh, undergrad college because, one, I was living on campus for most of the time. I mean, off campus, excuse me. And two, the food was atrocious. Um, really? 
I, yeah, it was bad. And I go back every year for my camp because that's where they have it. Um, that's where they hold it. And every year we do, we do, um, student surveys at the end of camp about how do you like this? What was, you know, what was your favorite part? What was your low part? You know, what, you know, rate the scale, rate on the scale of one to five on this speaker, on this speaker, on this activity. And inevitably we always have the one that says rate the food and it gets like a one. Um, and that's just because we don't go lower than a one. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's bad. Um, it's a small school. I mean, it's a very small school. So, I mean, they, they don't have the resources, I guess, um, that a bigger university would have. But did they so, run their own cafeteria or? No, they ran outsourced? it out of, it was, it was outsourced to, uh, a, a couple different things. I can't remember what, what the different ones were. Um, Sodexo maybe mm-hmm. was one. Um, but it wasn't like, it wasn't until after I left, they actually got their first like fast food restaurant on campus. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, and that a was big a big thing deal. now, right? I mean, all yeah. campuses on pretty much every college is bringing in that whole airport model. You get these little kiosk style restaurants yeah. on campus, you know, so you can enjoy that. Well, and to we, put it in perspective, there's only one on our campus, on that campus. Oh, okay. So that does put it into perspective, you know. Yeah. Well, that that's kind of a good segue. We we better go ahead and kind of define yeah, let's what jump into is it. a yeah, meal yeah. plan and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so, so a meal plan, how, the way yeah, we're talking about it. it. Go ahead, tell us. The meal plan, the way we're talking about it, is it's a plan that you you pay the school usually within tuition. Uh, it's usually attached to tuition, so you pay it on top of your tuition uh, and all the other fees if you're living on campus uh, or if you just want to voluntarily join the meal plan, uh, where it allows you access to the the dining hall and certain other amenities. Sometimes it comes with, um, uh, like if you if you purchase the certain meal plan, it'll come with extra dollars for use specifically for the fast food restaurants or different um, pieces, I guess you would say, of the college uh, for food wise. So snacks and stuff like that you can use. Uh, but it's just it's like a access to an all you could eat buffet um, at you know, at different times of the college, uh, whatever their, their schedule is. Uh, for eating and stuff, and uh, and if you have most colleges, uh, I don't know if this is true for you, Jason, but I, I would venture to say for almost all colleges, if you live in the dorm, you have to get one. You have to get some kind of meal plan. Mm-hmm. Which so, brings up a good point. Uh, so, at least at my college and at the different colleges I've been to, you had options. You had levels mm-hmm. of meal plan. So you buy one, and it may get you access where yeah, it's. You know, you can come in between a certain hours each day in the morning, maybe 630 to nine o'clock is breakfast. And then you can't get in in between nine and 1030 or 11 and then 11 to like one or one thirty is lunch and that type of thing. So they break it out usually on that three meal a day type thing and your meal plan. It'll be passes, right? It's like tickets to get in. And the idea behind it is if you can make certain that students are going to be there, that the food's paid for, you can cook more food in bulk type scenario. So it'll be a lower cost. Like anybody, at least in my college, anybody could go to the cafeteria. Anybody could go to the food hall and buy a pass to get in. But it was like mm-hmm. buying a pass at a normal restaurant, seven, $8 uh, for lunch, 10, $12 for dinner time meals, breakfast. I don't, I can't remember exact that cost, but Basically, they were doing the math and saying, look, this is what it would cost to randomly feed people out, out of the general public. And that included students, students, anybody could come in there. But if you bought the meal plan, you got this great discount associated with it, right? Um, every meal, let's say you bought 50 tickets or, or 50 accesses for the semester, right? So 10 week semester or 15 week semester, you could, you know, let's say a 15 week semester and you bought 45 passes, you could go to three meals a week. That would, that would be one of the lowest meal plans. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but it would move the cost rather than on average somewhere between seven and $10 down to four or $5 per meal. So it would save you money in the long run, but you had to buy it all together. And one cool thing about it, you could roll it into student loans, or your scholarships, if you had any, would would go towards that and cover it type thing. So anyway, but they were all levels, right? There was a certain number of meals. You could set it out by day. Some places have like, you know, you can go to two meals a day and you choose the meal. Um, you brought up an interesting thing. Some campuses have these general stores, right, that you could buy cereal and drinks and 
cold sandwiches and things like that. And you could use it there. Or if it had fast food restaurants, so, you know, um, things like that. So that was what our meal plan looked like in college. Uh, if you're in an inner city um, type thing where you have a lot of restaurants around you and stuff, lots of times the school will enter into a contractual relationships with local businesses around it and say you could even use your meal uh, ticket um, your, you know, your meal cards there towards their mm-hmm. meals, towards certain types of uh, food that they offered, you know, type thing. So a meal plan was a little kind of a mix mash of all these benefits that you could get out of it. Right. So no, no school was going to be exactly the same. You really have to research your school and say, look, what am I really getting for this? Right. Yeah. And I, I will say UGA, um, when I was in grad school, they had that thing, like you were saying, where they worked with other restaurants around the area, kind of downtown area. They mm-hmm. had like these bulldog bucks that uh-huh. you can use those at the restaurants too. Uh, so that was kind of the benefit of if you were to get a meal plan, obviously the bigger the meal plan, the more bulldog bucks you got on the other end too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you, that's, that's another thing. Again, my, my undergrad did not have that. And, you know, that's a big deal. Like sometimes you don't want to go, you don't have time to go sit down for a meal, but you can run by the coffee shop and grab some kind of pastry and a coffee and keep on going and eat that while you're walking or some kind of burrito or something like that. Right. I'm I'm a big breakfast burrito fan. (laughs) So I don't eat breakfast. I I, I should, but I don't. Really? No breakfast? Uh, No, no. I started, well, I started, I learned about that intermittent fasting thing Mm -hmm. and I've been doing it for probably three years now. And I just, uh-huh. it, it, it doesn't help when you eat your weight and food during the time that you're supposed to be eating. It's still supposed <laughs> to be eating less. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things I've, I guess I've gotten the habit of doing it. Um, well, I, had, and I, I have read a little bit about the health benefits, you know, yeah. teaching your body to, uh, not drop its blood sugar when you don't yep. have a little bit of food, right? It keeps that, that blood sugar yep. high, even during times of, well, I don't have time to eat, right? Type yeah. scenario. I've seen two two studies, one that talks about the benefits of it. So like you're saying, the blood sugar, there's a lot of stuff about the joints, your joint pains and stuff that, that's coming out of, from it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I also heard that it actually is no more of a benefit than just a traditional diet. So like if you choose okay. this or you choose a traditional diet, it, it's not going to make you lose weight faster. It's still within that kind of dietary mindset. So there, it's just, you know, give and take and like I said, I tried it and I think I just got in the habit of it. I don't even think about it anymore because it's not like I'm eating healthy during the times I'm supposed to be eating. Um, well, there you go. Down, you know, incremental steps for improvement, yeah. right? <laughs> so um, back to, let's, let's get back on the, the rails. Um, so we just talked about meal plans. So the alternatives for meal plans. I mean, I think there's pretty much one alternative is you either get it or you don't. Yeah. Um, well, and you, I, I would say this, you know, there are alternatives they are in the plan you're going to get yeah. and how yeah. you use your meal plan. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the word plan is in there, right? Yeah. There's <laughs> I mean, different levels. There's different yeah. levels that definitely you can get. So, uh, well, you know, I, I saw with my roommate um, in college, he used his in a, a completely different way than mine, but I, I don't know how, I, let's, let's give an example for How did you, how'd you use your meal plan? Well, I didn't have one. So oh, you, I was oh, the one that one. came in. Okay. I never had one. I just came in and like you said, I bought those daily passes if I was ever going to eat with somebody or, and this could be in that, that the way you said, I don't know if this is what you were talking about when you said your, 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 uh, your roommate, the way he used it. But, uh, I was, there was also times where I would come in and people would, would let me use theirs cause they had an extra or two. And mm-hmm. so they would bring in friends. Um, but I, again, our food wasn't great. It wasn't something that I was going to spend that much money on. I could get better food, maybe a little bit more expensive, but better food outside of, of campus. Right. And I lived at home, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, when when you have that foundation, right, you, you got yeah. the home meals and, and cooking and stuff. See, I didn't have that scenario. I was moved to another city. I didn't have anybody around me type scenario. So I was going to buy the meal plan just by virtue of I didn't have a kitchen. I didn't have anything I yeah. could cook in. And buying food individually would have been very expensive. Yeah. Right. Even if you add up. See, I got the full meal plan my first year which meant every single meal. Uh, I had three meals a day, plus, like you said, a few uh, bucks additional that I could slide for snacks and stuff like that. Now, I will say this. It kept me from being part of the ordering pizzas at midnight. It kept me from, you know, because restaurants are expensive. 
I mean, it's yeah. just that simple. Like you start ordering out and doing, especially now with Uber and uh, Uber Eats and, um, you know, some of the other fast food delivery DoorDash, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Most of those were venture capital funded. You know, now that the VC funds have run out, basically they should be entering that maturity phase. Now they're no longer subsidized by these investment dollars. So all these fees are attached. It is ridiculous. Ridiculously expensive now to eat Grubhub or Uber Eats or any of these others. I mean, what would otherwise be a eight to ten dollar meal if you went and got it and picked it up is turning into twenty to twenty five dollars. Yeah. Right. With the delivery fees and the other services and everything like that. So I actually I see the model, the whole business model collapsing a little bit. But that being said, back to the whole meal plan thing, you know, going in the going into college. You're not sure what your schedule is. You're not sure about all these things. You don't know about your budget, right? You don't have money, you know, saved up for this purpose that you, you've got it dedicated for. So it's easier sometimes just to say, look, I know all my meals are covered. I know I can plan that way that I'm not going to go hungry, that in between my classes, I know the time period that I can do this, that type of thing, right? Um, so I guess that's what I'd like to talk about. You know, you're big on planning, uh, you know, strategy yep. stuff. I put honestly a strategy behind my eating plan. I mean, did you have a, a eating plan strategy in college? I, I mean, I no, I ate when <laughs> I was full or bored. With I mean, when I was hungry or bored, whichever one happened. Um, no, I and that's probably one of the things. Like, I even even to this day, like I can I know if I go back home to my my parents' house to stay with them, like if I take the kids to them or whatever. Uh, to spend a week with them. I eat more when I'm at my parents' house than I do at my, my own house. By mm -hmm. far. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. um, because usually when I'm, at, you know, at home with my family and that's it, it's I, we have a plan for the week. This is what we're going to have for our meals for the week. I plan everything out. I go grocery shopping on Saturday or Sunday or whatever, get the food, and then I just cook the, the, the each night what the, the meals that we had planned unless we go out to eat, like we'll go out to eat like once maybe a week or every two weeks or whatever. But, um, but when I'm at my parents' house, cause they, they have that kind of old school mentality where you just buy a whole bunch of stuff and then you just kind of figure out what you're going to eat. You know, if you have it, if you need to run the store, but they have a lot of stuff that you can just snack on. And man, I eat mm -hmm. so much when I'm over there. It's, oh God, it's awful. Um, you like, know, I, I, I have I the same really have thing. My, my mom yeah. keeps too much food around when I go back oh, to God, the farm, yes. you know. Uh, oh. She's always got a lot of food cooked, a lot of things laying around. And, you know, the girls are always asking for something new. So there's just more and more food on top of food being brought out to, to you know, satisfy mm -hmm. the kids. So I guess in terms of what I was talking about, different ways of using the plan, uh, your meal plan, <clears throat> you can think about it like this. It's a security thing. So you can look at it as a security blanket that, look, I got I got my meals covered. I'm not going to have to be short of money and not be able to eat. So that's a certainty. There's also the thing of, am I going to get up in the morning and eat breakfast? If I know I'm not, then I need a lesser meal plan that I can use in that way. So I won't be wasting that money. Or if I could somehow use my meal plan buck somewhere else just to grab coffee if you drink coffee or something like that, right? So that'd be another way to use it. Some people got the meal plan just for their ability to use it at the fast food places when they want to. And so instead of doing like a daily meal plan, you would do something just a certain number of meals that you can buy during the week. And you you honestly, hopefully you'd plan it and do the math and say, look, what is what is my lifestyle going to look like? Because there are other aspects that you consider, not just cost and timing, right? When it goes into planning, I mean, yep. in, in your mind, what are so cost and planning? We know that, right? What's your schedule look yeah. like, and how much is it going to cost you? But what are some other factors we need to think about? So, I mean, obviously, like you said, cost is going to be the biggest one, um, mm -hmm. and and then you know the plan, the level of plan you have. So, so one of the the strategies, just to kind of hit on one of the points you're talking about, the strategies is is I know at I think at our school, I believe, I, for some reason I was looking at a plan, or maybe it was my old school, I'm not sure, but like they said, okay, this plan is you get three meals uh, seven times, or three meals seven days a week. So mm -hmm. essentially it's every day of the semester. But then you can also do just a little lower one where you're saying, okay, I'm getting three meals five days a week. Mm -hmm. And you're not doing, essentially what you're saying is you're not doing the weekends, which is good for some students because if you're always going to go home on the weekends or you're going to go home on the majority of the weekends, then you don't need those meals. That's just mm -hmm. extra waste, uh, extra cost that you don't need. 
Uh, and then if you are somebody who is, uh, you, you also have a job and you're going to you know eat somewhere closer to your job, then you don't need that maybe a dinner or breakfast or whichever time that you're going to be doing that. Those are different level strategies. But the other considerations, I think, you know, one, one big one, and this is kind of where uh, it was more impactful to me because I didn't have one, um, but just the social aspect of it. Because, I mean, that is the, that is where all the students come together that are on campus and you have this just kind of uh, social atmosphere where you get to meet people, hang out with people, Mm -hmm. socialize with people. Um, It's also a great place to do study sessions. You know, you meet with your, your, your group. If you have a group project or whatever, you meet with them during lunch or whatever. Um, Just the social aspect of it was, was very important. And that's, again, that's why I would go there and I would just pay for the separate meal is because I still want to be a part of that social aspect in certain areas uh, or certain times of the semester. That's a great point. That's what I was actually going to bring up myself first. Like, and that's how I think you know, I saw a difference. So the very first semester I was in college, pretty much everybody around brought the same meal plan. And we all went to the cafeteria for lunch and dinner and we'd meet up and there was this social thing. It was an escape from the academic environment, right? It was an escape from what you were doing. So you could sit around and talk and stuff like that. Some people would stay and study. Second semester, a bunch of those people that were in our group said, well, we're not using all our meal plan things. We'll just buy a certain number a week, which meant they weren't going to. So it broke up the social group. It interrupted this whole social calendar that we all kind of had and depended on. It was hugely disappointing for me, quite frankly, because the the that time that I enjoyed so much, you know, being from the South, uh, it, you know, it, eating mealtime is a big thing. Right. Yeah. You plan meals as events. That's why we're so fat yeah. in the South. Right. Most of us uh, eating is a, just this huge. At least 50 percent of us. Right. You know, um, and you put that kind of emphasis on it. Well, that carried over in college and that type of thing. So I guess that leads into my second point that I was thinking about. Right. You brought up the first one is. You have to plan your health and, you know, mental health, physical health that goes along with eating. Right. When you're in a stressful environment, food can be a crutch. Right. People will eat more. Right. They'll do things to replace or sometimes people go the opposite direction, don't eat at all. But it's actually more common, I think, for people to overeat or to abandon their healthy eating habits and things like that. So I did, like most people, I put on the freshman 15 pounds. Because I was using food as, you know, an escape from, all right, I'm studying, I'm doing all this kind of stuff or I'm just going to go to the cafeteria and eat because that'll be a good break for a while, which when I was, you know, in high school back home and stuff, my breaks would be, well, I'm just going to go do something else for a while. I didn't need that that constant form of distraction, that social environment to do that. I could go, uh, you know, go for a walk, go for a run, go. I, I love to play tennis when I was growing up, you know, uh, type scenario, which is funny. I didn't pick it up till I was about 15 years old. But when I started hitting at the public courts, you know, a little bit, it was just a great pastime for me. So um, I would go do that. Right. Type scenario. And but now, you know, I think people get into that cycle of the social aspect of it. They abandon their their normal eating habits that they had in high school. They don't have as much. And that causes them to put on weight. And that actually I saw it with so many people. It started affecting. I couldn't sit in their physical health necessarily, but I could sit in their mental health. They started to lose self-esteem and things like that because they didn't feel like they were their healthy selves. Right. Um, So I guess I know this is a a kind of a turn away from, you know, our core thing, what we're talking about here, choosing a meal plan and all that kind of stuff. But you have to consider that. You have to consider how you're going to use the meal plan and how it's going to more deeply affect your life, not just cost and timing. But social aspects that we talked about first and then your health, right? Your mental health. Are you prone to overeat? Are you prone to uh, make that too big a part of your life? And are you prone to suffer the consequences from it? Because it, it took me, honestly, a long time to understand how I was going to use this meal plan eating environment in not a healthy way. I ultimately, at the end of the year, I got into an exercise routine again. You know, I trained really hard for a summer and I lost that 15 pounds, right? I'm, I'm roughly the same weight I was in high school uh, now because I figured it out, right? Type thing. And 
and no matter how much you exercise, you know, your eating and your diet is is going to be a huge part of, you know, whether you maintain what you see as a, a healthy physical condition for yourself, you know? You know, and I, I don't know, I, I heard this, this, uh, this research project that was a while back and essentially anytime we make decisions, anytime we have to make decisions, so we have to think about something, we have to come up with, you know, the, the pros and cons, and, but anytime we make a decision, whether it be small or big, we use this chemical in our brain. And uh, essentially, and this is the, the most layman's term of this research study that, that, that from what I can remember, but they pretty much said that every day we have a certain amount of this chemical that we, we use we, or we can use th- throughout the day to make decisions. And any time uh, we can automate things, it helps us because we don't have to make those decisions. We know that they're coming. And when you go to the, 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 the you know, the cafeteria uh, or, or food court or whatever your college has, it limits those decisions. You can get, like, like you said, the strategy of it. You don't have to make those decisions. You know what's going to be there on what days. You know what you're going to eat. And it makes those, so that way you can kind of use that, I guess, the chemical is what they were talking about. I can't remember the, the technical name for it, but the chemical, you can use them for other critical thinking aspects of your life. Um, mm-hmm. That's why we tend to feel drained in the evening is because we have to use that chemical over the course of the day. Uh, and when you can automate it, like if you know what you're going to have for breakfast every single morning, whatever it may be, if you already have it planned out, then you don't have to use it for that 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 decision. And so, yeah, I, I can definitely understand the, 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 the dietary strategy, the dietary plan side of that. Uh, I got one more um, of another consideration. It kind of goes into the social aspect of it um, because that's where all the people are. But there's also, I mean, it, it can also stand on its own as well, is the convenience factor. I mean, the convenience, it's there on campus. If you're on campus, then you don't have to go anywhere. A lot of times it's within walking distances of the of the dorms um, or they have some kind of transit system that can get you there fairly quickly. And you don't have to get in your car. You don't have to spend the money to get gas, which gas, you don't want to do that right now. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to, like you pay, like you said, you don't have to pay those extra fees if you're talking about Uber or, or DoorDash or anything like that. Um, which by the way, I've never used. Have you ever used either one of those Uber Eats or DoorDash? Um, yeah, I have. I mean, I, my wife uses I, them frequently in the corporate environment. It makes sense, right? You're working, well, yeah, you don't yeah. have time, that type of thing. Sure. And so by virtue of that, but normally using them at home, no, I'm, I, I'm not I, a big order out food. I go to the grocery store. I cook every day. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, me too. I love to cook. I love to meal plan, do all that kind of stuff. So no, I don't, I don't use them. Yeah. It's just, I think it's just the, con- the there's a convenience side of it. It is the same thing as it. And this is what I went through talking about convenience for my college is, it's the same convenience you get from the social aspect of it, of living on campus versus living off campus. Because when a lot of the people that you are associate with, you hang out with, when they live on, on campus, when they're in the dorms, there's a lot of things that happen in the dorms. I mean, you have spur of the moment dorm parties Mm -hmm. uh, or, or wherever you're at. And if you have to get a call and you live 10, 15, 20 minutes away from campus, then you're just, you, you got to get ready, get, get, get going. And you don't have that convenience side. You don't have that ability to just say, Hey, here I am. I'm, I'm here. Or for like me, you know, I lived, like I said, I, I lived about 15, 20 minutes off campus and I was playing soccer. Well, the guys who lived in the dorms, because most of them lived in the dorms, uh, after practice, they would just run to the dorms, take a shower, and they're ready to go. I had to run home, take a shower, get ready, and then run back to get where they're at. And they were already, you know, done. They were they were already finished kind of getting ready and had already started whatever they were doing. So there is a large convenience side specifically for the the meal side because it's just there. It's it's mm-hmm. it's you know, you don't have to do a lot of traveling or get. Um, so I, I do think that is that is something to, to consider as well. So do you have any I, other ones? I would just say, let's just summarize it all together. So sure. one cost, right? If, if you know you're going to use it, then it can be a cheaper alternative Two, flexibility of the plan. Choose the plan that allows you to do what you want to explore the plans really well. Uh, you know, if you're going to use, you know, it at restaurants around, check to make sure there are options, right? And things like that. Three, um, the social aspect, understand that that's going to be a big part of your social routine in life type thing. Four, 
the health benefits and things like that. Make certain you have a plan going in. So know your personality type, know whether you, you value the, the food or you have a tendency to overeat or things like that, right? So you can plan out a healthy approach to it. So you're eating good foods and you're not over, you're not taking in more calories and you're burning out. So you're, you're, you know, putting on a lot of weight because we know that sure. leads to, uh, you know, poor health consequences. It also leads to the mental aspect that we talk about, the self-esteem aspect uh, type thing. Uh, women tend to be more heavily afflicted with men than men. You know, men put on weight and we're like, okay, whatever. Women, it's a sad scenario, but they tend to take yeah. it really hard and, and um, type things in terms yeah. of self-esteem, self-worth type thing. So understand that. And then lastly, just make sure it works in your life and your schedule because the, the convenience factor is everything, right? You're there for a primary purpose, which means to grow as an individual. Now, part of that's the education you receive in the classroom. Part of it is the interaction with others that you receive as a person. Part of it is the extracurriculars that you take part in in college. And all of that, you know, the one thing we need is is food and water. You know, I mean, we, mm-hmm. we need sustenance to be able to do things. And that's really all food in a meal plan is. It's sustenance, but it's sustenance that has all these other aspects of social entertainment, fulfillment, those types of things. So if you can plan If you can establish a routine, if you can understand yourself and how you tend to react to these things in different scenarios, you can make a plan and you can use the meal plan the way it should be used for you to help you grow as a person, not in terms of like weight and size, but to support all else you're doing, right? All the academic, all the social, all the extracurricular, it is, you know, a necessity that you can use as a tool or you can misuse it. Yep. Well, this has been fun. Um, much like talking about food and like I would <laughs> eat, eat, like I could eat food. I could, I could do it all day. Um, you got anything to say before we head out? Just remind everybody, hit us up on the social media channels, right? Let us know what you want to hear about. Cause we are happy to talk about it. Awesome. Well, we hope you enjoyed it until next time. We hope to see you there. Goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into.